Mighty Crane build. Uh, this should be the last Mighty Crane build episode. I hope to get it all wrapped up today. Or in this episode, probably take me longer than a day, probably only take you 20 minutes. But uh, what? Uh, so, first job is to uh, sort out the engine controls and make a little cover for the engine so it doesn't get rained on. Yeah? Bit bike kill switch. Okay, got the uh, engine controls hooked up. They, the labels on this switch are wrong as well. We've got the labels on the uh, on a choke are wrong. Labels on this are wrong, so we actually want to be in the off position to start to run it. Okay, so hopefully you can all appreciate having a, a bead roller and at the same time uh, making an engine cover for a twin engine crane's two stroke winch motor and not putting louvers in the aforementioned engine cover would be a dereliction of duty. So that's what we're about to attempt to do for the first time ever. I will be putting louvers in some metal. No, not like that, I won't. Well, there are many types of louvers. Um, but it has worked. Uh, whoop. Um, perhaps, perhaps not as pronounced as I'd like. I'm going to leave it there, though. These are. I'm just messing around. I'm quite happy though. Um, yeah. Well, there's the engine cover. Uh, I'm just out here. I was painting a bicycle metallic blue, so I can put blue metal flake over the top of it and then lacquer it. Uh, it's just a shitty old 90s mountain bike. It's really rusty though, so I cleaned it. Um, <laughs> no real reason, just just wanted a metal flake bike. Um, 
but seeing as though we've got the metallic blue out anyway and it's already mixed up we'll uh we'll just hit the uh, hit the engine cover with this not quite gonna match the rest of the crane um well there we go nice bit of epoxy primer on the uh on the legs there that's from <laughs> that's from uh painting the bike yesterday or the putting the putting the primer on anyway um shot the shot the leftovers up the leg there That'll, that that bit won't rust, you know. Even if the rest of it rusts away, that bit will be uh, that bit will be fine. Okay, so the engine covers on and painted, painted and on, um, looking suitably gnarly. Excellent, lovely, flat, metallic paint where no one's going to see it. <laughs> okay, next little job is to put an end on this cable and um, create a proper quick release point I can I can hook it to uh, where it's not going to come off. So I can take the um, take the block on and off quickly. Okay, so for the uh, for the cable end, I'm going to use this um, swageless swageless fitting, um, mostly because I've seen these around for ages and uh, <laughs> wanted to play with one. I, I I appreciate a good stainless steel fitting, you know. Uh, so the idea is, I'm going to put the uh, put the nut over the cable. I've, I've marked where the cable needs to go to. Nut over the cable. And there's a, a collet, I call it a collet, it's got teeth on the inside to grip the cable. These are apparently 90% the working load, the working load of these is apparently 90% of the working load of the cable. So uh, this cable is about 10 times stronger than it needs to be. So 9 times stronger is, is okay for an end fitting. Yeah. Okay. That slid on there. Then there's a uh, brass bush. Boop. Looks like a wedding ring. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that, I guess. Then the the end itself. Isn't that lovely? It's like it's like jewelry. Oh, okay. Don't wanna, don't wanna have stray strands on this. I do have a hydraulic crimper for like battery terminals and that, but um, what? Well, I just didn't wanna do it. Didn't wanna. Um, I'd rather buy it because I only need one fitting. If I had loads of fittings to do, I'd, I'd perhaps consider using uh, swage ferrules, but I think for the sakes of reliability and not having anything really heavy land on my toe, um, we're going to go with this. It's safer, isn't it? As long as I do this one, right? All right. I think the instruction said, uh, talk and tell you can bend 10mm stud work. <laughs> Got a little lock nut here as well, yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna nip that up.
reach up. Ah, Kilimanjaro. Okay, let's, let's make a little hook to attach this to the chassis. Okay, got that uh, scorched on there with the with the gasless welder, gasless MIG. What a fucking mess! I hate that thing. <laughs> really handy tool to have around, you know. Like I've, uh, I've ended up. I used to take the take the little art world of places if I had to go and uh, you know jack up an aircraft and make some jacking adapters or something, um, help someone out, whatever. Uh, but at least for this thing, I can do thin stuff. You know, smaller profiles more easily. But it's just dirty compared to a you know gas fed MIG, isn't it? But, uh, either way, it's handy. It's a decent decent enough weld. And uh, oh god, I love that cable end. That is something. Tell me that isn't something to behold. Right, so what we're doing now is uh, making a latch for this. Uh, well, we've got to see two things actually. We've got the uh, the fuel tank. of oh, the engine actually hits the hits the I beam there. So I'm just gonna hack out a lump of metal around there, and then on the other side. Um, I'm gonna make the latch hook onto the hook onto the crossbar there because I want to I want a latch to stop this carriage wandering around if I'm picking up concrete pipe and moving the crane with it there. So um, we'll, we'll hack out the beams so the engine clears and then put a big plate of 10 mil steel up on the side there to put a bit of strength back into this. Um, you know, that's the sort of place we get a bit of flex. So I'm gonna extend it all the way up to the top. And and then uh, on onto that flat plate, we'll mount the latch to uh, to sort of hook onto that um, hook onto that cross piece, and then we'll have to push it or move it around to to unlatch it. But that'll be right. We'll just have a little little handle down here at the back that I can reach from either side. It will be all right, I reckon. They say about uh, March, um, the weather in March, isn't it? In, in like a lamb, out like a lion, and vice versa. In like a lion, out like a lamb. So if it starts off nasty in, in March, it'll end up beautiful. And, and my days, look at this. This is, this is particularly welcome. I, I do like a bit of sunshine, you know? The first bit of sunshine of the year is always um, particularly delightful, you know what I mean? Fucking lovely, lads. Okay, this lovely crane's finished then, chaps, I reckon. Um, get everything done. Covered that little engine up. I didn't get a cover on the big one, actually. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be right. Um, fitting on the end of the, on the cable and got some engine control sorted and made a lock for the, uh, for the, 
uh, for the winch gear. Pretty cool. Okay, so I, I, I don't, I've got nothing really the right shape and weight to test this with. Um, the only thing I could think of is, uh, is trying to pick up the the dump truck. I'll just, I'll just remind everyone what's going on here. We've got the um, sheath for lifting the concrete pipes. Concrete pipes are 500 kilos and I'm only going to lift the concrete pipes when the winch is locked in the rear position like that and then the rest of the time this crane is for operating the mucking out bucket when um, I mean I'm only anticipating 100 to 150 kilos there and the carriage can be unlocked and it can roll forwards with the bucket on it to tip the bucket out of the hole um, so, so what? you know that's that's why I haven't gone straight to ballast. I want to avoid ballast if I can because uh, you know it's going to hamper mobility. It's all extra weight on the wheels isn't it and if I'm only putting 100 kilos to the end of the boom I don't think it will need it. It might do though. It might do. Um, but you know that, that engine's a lot further out the back than uh, the booms out the front you know and we've got quite a lot of structure. We've got you know well over 100 kilos of steel hanging off the back of this thing. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, we'll you know, I, it won't it won't be the end of the world if I have to put ballast on there, but I'd like to avoid it if I can. And you know, because I've taken so long about this, we're <laughs> we, we're dry now, aren't we? You know, there's no no mud on the ground, so um, hopefully, hopefully it'll do all right for traction, just like that. Um, yeah, let's let's give it a go. Try and uh, try and lift this uh, dump truck up. Okay, so a bit of a change of plan folks, um, rather than spend a load of time trying to hoist the dump truck up and probably putting dents in it because I'm not really set up to lift anything but round pipe and the mucking out bucket, uh, I've got to get this place tidied up because um, what I just hit the button on a 10 concrete manhole sections, um, a 7.5, no 750 mil each height and uh, 1200 mil internal diameter that's four foot internal diameter so it comes out about 1300 OD uh, total weight 750 kilo per per slice yeah <laughs> all right um, and what I'm gonna have to get them laid out so this crane can pick them up either way long and short of it is um, I'm not gonna test the crane on the dump truck or anything else so I'm pretty confident um, the winch is going to work fucking trains and uh, you'll just have to tune in next time and watch me uh, mess around with some pipe when it arrives. <laughs> <laughs>